Hi, uh, so hi everyone and welcome to the 20th Deacon Seminar. So it's my pleasure today to welcome my colleague Satya Rozunek. Satya is a PhD candidate at the University of Warsaw Doctoral School of Social Scientist, Sciences. She has been working as part of the Digital Economy Lab for the past few years, working on topics of digitalization and future skills. She also conducts research on the technology-induced transformation of work and is part of a project on the attention economics in the digital entertainment sectors. Today, she will present on the topic of Roblox and the market for virtual experiences. So Satya, thanks uh, for being here and the floor is yours. Thanks for, for the introduction. So I'll try to uh, share my screen. So yes, so just... Uh, as Wojtek mentioned, today I would like to pre present our joint work with Wojtek and with Michał Paliński on Roblox and its market for virtual experiences. So just to begin, I think Roblox needs a bit of introduction. Uh, so it's one of the largest gaming platforms and it has um, it has grown from 30 million users, monthly, monthly players in 2016 to more than uh, 200 million monthly active users by October to, uh, 2021. So the growth is huge and the numbers are also huge. And so just so you know, it's like over 50% of uh, kids from United States under 16 years old, um, old played the game. So it's very popular and it also, um, it also not only allows for playing on the platform, but it also allows for creating own content so that it has a, uh, a game engine that allows anyone to contribute with own content. And hence it also has like 30, almost 30 million content developers who, who um, has been busy and, and created already around uh, 11 million games on the platform. So, so the numbers are huge, it's very popular and uh, it also has its own um, virtual economy with own currency. The currency is called Robux and you can obviously buy Robux with traditional um, currencies and um, exchange it back after um, after collecting, obtaining a sufficient amount of money, so that it's also a place where you can actually earn um, earn some money. And just so you know, this is the the main main page of Roblox, so that you can see that you can browse through some games and choose from some categories, so that it's like uh, some most engaged categories are recommended for one and also those that are new and um, and coming. So um, also what is important, um, the platform refers to its, um, its games, not as games, but as experiences, as games. The definition of, of games would not capture the variety of different uh, of of different things you can participate in on the platform because it's not only that you have games but you also have events and and some parties and gatherings so that you can um it's not like, like you can win roblox right you can win particular games within uh the platform and then you can participate in some social gatherings in some events and parties so that you socialize with other people, not necessarily competing with them. And yeah, so, so that the, the, the size and the reach of the platform obviously attracted some official uh, and promotional events. So we could, we, we had uh, in Roblox some concerts, for example, by 21 um, pilots. And there were also some official fashion shows like Gucci Garden and promotional experiences for movies, for example, for Wonder Woman. So there is like a plenty of different events that were sponsored by some, um, some companies. And um, it's, um, it's important then, then in those, um, those events, you can, um, you can, uh, you can, <laughs> you can purchase some uh, special uh, artifacts that you can 
uh, collect with, for your avatar. And when you uh, enter such experience, such, such sponsored one, then you can earn some badges that you can then show off among your friends that you uh, actually been uh, to, to the experience. And also you can just use the Robux that you uh, have previously bought with traditional uh, currencies to, to enter the experiences, to buy some server space for the participation, and also to buy some game passes and uh, various virtual gear. So changes to your avatars, like appearance, weaponry, and vehicles. And those uh, things that you can buy for your avatar uh, and also, um, also the, the, the badges or passes you can um, get from an experience uh, are the thing that, that creates this um, interconnectedness between experiences. Because it's not like other Roblox is a bit different than other platforms or some complex uh, video games as at ease, it allows for uh, experience to be interconnected. And it's uh, interconnected all through um, some uh, gear. So those changes to avatars, things you can buy and, uh, and go with two different experiences. And it also is interconnected as an individual experience can host several different uh, inner worlds within with different mechanics mechanics that the player can easily switch between, uh, between with the same avatar. Yeah, so, uh, so basically um, this feature, this feature with the same avatar to different experiences and also the feature of the experiences being interconnected with each other within the virtual worlds is uh, the feature why um, Roblox is often mentioned in this context of so-called Metaverse, which is a, a concept of uh, for the future of virtual realities that relies on this um, interoperability, so interactions between between its components. And why is it important? Well, Roblox is driving Roblox is driving changes in entertainment, and we need to remember that the game industry is rapidly growing and it's largest across creative sectors, and also that. Um, Microtransactions uh, play important role in its revenues. So the things that you buy with Robux are very, very important for, for the revenues of game, of the platform. And uh, there is this trend of growing importance of user-created content. Um, and uh, also we see that the virtual experiences and virtual economies such as uh, Roblox are largely unstudied especially when we think of, um, of about them uh, from a quantitative size, side. So um, the closest related literature uh, to, to those virtual experiences and virtual realities comes from, uh, from uh, topics such as gaming, video gaming, and multiplayer gaming, especially, and social media, some platforms and applications. And we, we uh, browsed through some literature reports and trends regarding especially games and the concept of metaverse. And we found out that the literature suggests that the online game updates uh, are very, very, very important for uh, increasing uh, players' engagement, and that the trend is um, evolving from one-time products, like games which are one-time products, to experiences which are uh, constantly evolving. So those uh, updates um, increase the attractiveness of, uh, of, uh, of games and, uh, and increase play players' engagement. And also, it's um, the most important, uh, the most popular games uh, enable social interactions. So we have the top games with uh, with a top number of players, which are uh, those massive multiplayer online uh, online games. And uh, looking at this concept of metaverse and thinking about Roblox in the context of metaverse, it's like the interoperability is, um, is becoming a, a very strong trend uh, across uh, digital entertainment. Also, um, when, uh, while introducing this system of rewards uh, in some games, in some entertainment, digital entertainment, uh, we like introducing uh, elements of gamification, we can 
positively affect the engagement of gamers and also uh, the things that we can purchase within a game. For example, the, the things that we can buy for our virtual uh, appearance attract players as they feel like they can uh, have more control over the, um, their identity and existence in, in within the game. So looking at those trends, we also uh, when we also looked at the, um, the, the impact of advertising and obviously advertising is beneficial for attra uh, attracting players. And building on that, we wanted to um, we wanted to um, know what actually determines the successfulness and sustainability of virtual experiences, the ones such as in Roblox, and building on the literature that we uh, that we encountered and the trends and also the discussions. Um, we hypothesize that those experience updates would lead to higher numbers uh, of daily players in Roblox and also that um, that uh, with this growing importance of uh, of digital media that facilitates some social interaction we, sh we we suggest that allowing for uh for larger groups of people participating simultaneously would contribute to to experience um to, to the number of uh, players and experience uh, sustainability so that larger experience servers lead to higher numbers of daily players. We also looking at this concept of interoperability, we thought that allowing to bring this purchased gear, so the changes to uh, avatars, change, uh, some, some, some virtual it items that we buy, so allowing to bring them into an experience from another one would contribute to, to the popularity of the experience as it would be interconnected with, with other ones. Um, and looking at the, um, the badges, so uh, those rewards that we can get in a game and passes, so in-game purchases, we thought that the number uh, of available badges and passes would contribute to uh, to the popularity of an experience. And uh, finally, uh, we say that more advertising uh, is related to a higher number of daily players. And so that you know what we can, uh, can get from, um, from the Roblox website uh, is that we know uh, the, the, the experience and creator names, and then we also know the, the, the entrance fee so that if that experience, the, the, the one that is on the slide that's in, in an example would be not free to enter, we would have a, a number of robots that we need to pay to enter in this uh, a green, green bar. And we also know how many people um, liked and disliked the, ex the, the experience. And we go for, um, next we, we could uh, know how many active players are right now uh, uh, in, in, the, in the game and uh, how many people uh, indicated that it's their favorite game and how many, uh, how, how many players, like how many visits uh, cumulatively uh, were um, um, accounted in this, in this experience. So I don't know whether you can see because it's very small in here, but this is one of the most, um, the, the, the one of the most popular um, experiences on, on Roblox and it has, more than 27 billion visits. So this is a huge number of people that uh, entered the game uh, during the last uh, five, five years. And then also we have the dates uh, of creation and the last updates and uh, server size, genre, uh, and whether the indication whether uh, gear, uh, so those virtual uh, items are allowed to enter with or not. And if, if yes, what are the categories of those uh, uh, allowed items? Then we have the uh, private server price. Uh, so if you want to create a private server for just for you and your fr uh, friend, you need to pay some money and uh, in some cases and in other cases, it's, it's like with this one, it's free. Then there are badges. Uh, to win within the game and the passes that you can buy. And also we, mm, we looked at the advertisements so that uh, each uh, experience uh, page has some 
uh, advertisements on it and the ad advertisements leads only to other experiences or uh, to the group of the creator or group of creators uh, of a particular experience. So um, we um, we gathered data from from the website and from the uh, Roblox API so that we have the, the two uh, distinct samples. The one is the general samples. I will go into the details uh, uh, soon. And the second one is the sample of new experiences. So from the experiences that are up and uh, coming. And collecting the data, we uh, covered uh, approximately 10% of all experiences on the platforms. And for the general samples, we, um, we gather data from Roblox API and uh, spread the additional data from additional information from uh, Roblox.com. And uh, we gather the data uh, several times a day for 50 days, so that after uh, 50 days, we would have the data on mean daily concurrent players and other additional data as well, so that we can have the overview of what is happening uh, on the platform. And um, we gather around 1.2 million uh, unique experiences, but we also focus them on those experiences that appear on the list from API. Uh, so the, the list from API is the list of top uh, 10,000 experiences. Uh, um, so which experiences appear on the list every day so that we would have this top, top experiences of the, uh, of, of, uh, of the whole uh, platform. And then looking at the panel of new experiences, we um, uh, scrap data, data from Roblox and some uh, information from the API. Uh, tracking new experiences over 78 days so that we would see what changes and how, how does it affect the, 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 the popularity of an experience and uh, the sample we tracked over the days uh, uh, was uh, as big as around 19,000 experiences. So in our analysis, we looked at the general sample, so at all unique experiences, but also on the top experiences. And then we looked all, uh, at the panel of new experiences. And when you're looking at all um, experiences, we can see that the popularity of Roblox experiences uh, varies significantly. So that we have uh, the number of active players from basically zero, a, a bit above zero to, uh, we, we have the means of active players in here. So that's why we have a bit, uh, a bit above zero to, uh, around uh, three, um, 300,000 active concurrent active players for the most popular one with a mean of four and median of one. So we have this, um, those uh, experiences that are super popular and affect the mean and median, uh, the mean of, um, uh, uh, of active players. And uh, we have a long tail of uh, zeros as well. And then the same is with the, the number of um, favorites and the server size, size varies between one and 700. And then we have the share uh, of experience in, uh, in advertisements varying from zero to 30%. So 30% is quite a lot of attention to, uh, going to one experience and the same similar for the creators. And also the majority of experiences do, mm, does not allow for any gear. So it's almost 97% that do not allow for, uh, for entering with gear. And also 80% um, um, of experiences are in the all genre and entrance fee varies from zero to uh, 1000 Robux, but uh, absolute majority of them is free to enter. And when we looked at uh, all experiences, we see that the server size and experience ads um, are posit uh, positively associated with number of active players. And um, we also controlled for those ent this ent entrance price and license uh, release in general. So uh, we didn't see that, um, that uh, advertising a creator would have any impact for, for the whole huge sample of all experiences. And what was kind of surprising, we also see that this 
uh, allowing for interoperability between experiences. So, go, uh, so, so allowing for uh, entering with uh, gear is actually negatively associated with, with the number of active players. And that's for all experiences, all unique ones. And then when we went to the top experiences, we added information on the badges and passes because it was kind of, uh, it was hard to to do obtain the information from for all the experiences so we limited the uh, scrapping the additional info on badges and passes to the sample of top experiences and in here we uh, we get that the uh, the number of badges so the rewards in game and a number of passes so the things that we can buy inside contribute to uh, the to the um, to top experiences popularity and also we got the uh, uh, the, the, the results for ads that are in accordance with what we uh, what we thought before and then with gear it's the same uh, case as with the all, all the samples and for the top ones uh, the server size so allowing for more people to participate simultaneously within, uh, within the experience is not, uh, not significant for, uh, for top experiences at all. And uh, when we looked at, uh, when we looked at um, new experience, we saw that they thrive on some personal rewards, some badges, and also on ads. But in this time, it's especially about the creators. It's not uh, about a um, an experience itself. And for for the uh, sample of top and all experiences, it was more about uh, advertising the experience itself. And here we advertise the uh, the creator, and it has more meaning for uh, for for a new experience and also updates um, are important and they so if we update frequently then uh, then then uh, uh, our experience would thrive but if you look at all ex all new experience it's uh, it has a positive sign so it's that is the first uh, column but when we control for having minimum to update so that the day the date of creation and date of update are not the same, then we get the result that is actually uh, uh, in accordance with our hypothesis. So for new experiences, the ones that have the same date of uh, creation and update, um, it, would, uh, it does not give uh, uh, the results that we, uh, we expect. And adding the rank ranking of experience from the previous days uh, will, would positively affect uh, today's active player base and it's, uh, it's, it's intuitive. And uh, when we looked at uh, the indication, the, the number of uh, favorites uh, of, um, that, that players indicated, we see that they are not related with ads and not related with gear or server size. They are all about the badges and, um, and passes and update. And when we think about that, it's like if, when you advertise, you attract someone to enter an experience, but it does not mean that it would be a favorite for him. So, uh, so winning a badge or allowing for purchasing something inside the experience is um, would be more related to uh, to an experience becoming a favorite of of a player. Uh, and it it's, uh, seems to be um, a logical explanation for, for such a result. So basically updates and rewards and offerings and ads would contribute to success and sustainability of an experience. And we have that um, updates are related to uh, rising active players uh, base for of new experience and then Mm, and then we have some differences between uh, between those old experience and top experiences in the impact that uh, particular uh, particular uh, game characteristics have on the active um, active uh, number of players. And what is uh, interesting because. For for majority of hypotheses, uh, we didn't find anything to um, reject them, but for 
uh, for the gear and the interoperability, we get that it's either uh, insignificant for new experiences uh, or uh, negatively associated with um, the number of active players for top and all. And I guess that it may, the reason may lay in um, the fact that only a very small amount of experiences actually allow for uh, for entering with uh, with with the gear. So maybe it's just it could be just the beginning uh, of such a trend. Or uh, since new experiences uh, do not um, do not for for new experience we do not have the results of being negative. So maybe it's it's going to change, or maybe it's just like that. So thank you very much for your attention. And and if you have any question, then then I'm here to answer them. Uh, thank you very much. And well, uh, now we have the room for questions. So if anyone has questions, please unmute and go ahead. Maybe I can just start. Do you hear me properly? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Please go ahead. Thanks. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Sophia. Um, I saw you last time, I think. Yeah. And um, I, I really like this seminar. I get to really love it because I learned so much last time with fan fiction. And this time, I think I actually have to try it. It sounds really, really fun. Um, what I was wondering at first, that's more of a storytelling thing, um, was the impact on consumer welfare. And I was uh, thinking about what your motivation is for the paper, how you want to sell it, what your target audience will be, because I think that it has, or it could have a um, huge impact also on how societies operate and what people actually choose to do if they have different options. And um, if you want to target the more general um, audience, that might be interesting um, to put it that way. I was also thinking about escapism and um, yeah, effects on real life. So to say, if you build your perfect life somewhere else, if I got that right, and you kind of get lost there. So what could be effects? And I'm interested in, if, if you want to look at it from a normative perspective too, and um, yeah, if there's, some motivation to go there because I think it could be really interesting. Um, and then I have some questions I um, didn't understand properly that that could be due to not me not knowing the, um, the experience in the game. So uh, I didn't really understand what the share in ads mean and the share for the creators. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really understand. And then last question. Um, as success rate, you take the number of active players, right? So that's your um, dependent variable of how successful the um, plugin is or that. Yeah, okay. Because I was wondering if you have um, information on how much people purchase within that, um, how is it called, the, the sub game, this add on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the experience and um, because maybe that would also be an interesting um, economic term of measuring success, because it might not be how many players are in there, but how much players spend when they're there. And um, yeah, thank you so okay. much. It was really interesting. Thanks for the question. So starting from the last one, we, we do not have the information on how much did they spend within an experience. So that's why it was about the active players uh, in uh, the experience. And then the, the question about the ads, it's um, we uh, on, on the Roblox website, we have those ads that are displayed and we were like downloading the information about the links to which games those uh, ads uh, refer, like uh, link the, the user to. And then we had the share of uh, a particular experience in the, uh, in, uh, in the, you know, in all, in all those, uh, ads that were collected 
I don't know whether I put it clearly. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I got it right. So there is more advertising for that experience, and people click that, and um, yeah, we that's why. Sorry, sorry. We do not have info on people clicking on it, but we we know what is this advertisement linking uh, advertisement linking people to. Mm -hmm. So if it goes for like a particular experience, that it gets a point for being like uh, advertised, and then we have a share in the whole advertising, uh, you know, bug. Okay. Uh, okay. So advertising helps. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Okay, yeah. And um, and what was the one with the creators? And so how much do you see the creator? So there's a link to the create or it's no. You can link uh, to um, the advertisement to an experience or to a group or oh, a okay. creator so that you, okay. you, you because you have a profile and it can be a profile of a creator. Uh, so you uh, get linked to uh, the profile. Yeah. Okay. Is it any more clear right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understood now. I'm I'm wondering if there are superstar creators or because the the um um distribution didn't seem very normally distributed. So is is there any um effect of these are the, the super um experiences and um because you have a lot of zeros, right? Yeah, we definitely have some experiences that are the top, top experiences so that they attract majority of people. And there is a, this long tail of uh, experiences that are actually created and do not attract anyone. So yes, so yes, it is. Uh, the distribution in here is a bit, uh, is, is not not exactly like we would like to see, right? We have the super superstars mm -hmm. and uh, I guess there are some, it's less like that about the creators, but there are some creators that uh, have more than one experience that would be popular as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks, do we have other questions? Comments. Well, we, we're still trying to work out what would be the best narrative here and the sort of a selling point for this. Uh, so I guess uh, some of the factors that we study are probably, you know, uh, it's not that uh, uh, innovative probably to say that the apps help, but uh, then there's some stuff we think might be more in line with what's currently debated with the interoperability and how many how much people can interact with each other we're not exactly sure how to best frame it so also if anyone has an idea on what would be the most interesting part thing here feel free to tell us your feelings uh, either either now or by email or however you see it and if there are no other questions, uh, unless there are some, uh, then well, thank you very much. Thank you, Satya, for presenting, and thank you everyone for coming. And hopefully, you. see you next month during the next seminar. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.